What is this formula? What does it mean? How do I use it? This is called the photoelectric effect equation. And in this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you where it comes from and how we use it. In the previous lessons in this playlist, we firstly spoke about photon energy or basically the energy contained in the light. So light shines on the metal and the light has photons, so little packets of energy contained within the light. And we can work out the energy of the photon using this formula. So the energy, the photons, have a particular energy. We also spoke about work function, which is inherent to the metal. So different metals have different threshold frequencies, and therefore they have different work functions. Remember, threshold frequency is the minimum frequency that a metal needs in order to allow an electron to be ejected from that metal surface. And work function is the minimum energy that the metal needs to allow an electron to escape from the surface of the metal. We said that let's pretend our work function is 10 joules. That means that this particular metal behind me needs at least 10 joules of energy to be shining on it to allow an electron to escape. So let's pretend I have 10 joules of energy shining on that metal and the work function is 10 joules. That's enough energy to allow the electrons to escape. However, the electrons don't move off with a kinetic energy. So they have enough energy to escape the metal surface, but they don't have a velocity. They don't have a kinetic energy. However, if I continue to increase the frequency of the light, so I make frequency bigger and increase the energy of the light, make the energy of the photons bigger, that will increase this value over here. So let's say we take it from 10 joules to 15 joules. Now, not only do I have enough energy to allow the electrons to escape. Remember, the minimum energy I need to allow electrons to escape is 10. So I have 15. The 15 joules that shines on the surface of the metal, 10 joules of that is needed to allow the electrons to escape because the work function is 10. And the other five joules will then be allocated to kinetic energy. So the higher the frequency of the light, as long as it's above the threshold frequency, the higher I make the frequency of the light, the more energy will be given to kinetic energy. And I showed you this formula, which is indeed the photoelectric equation. So back to my example, if my work function is 10 joules and the energy of my light is 10 joules, can you see that my kinetic energy will be zero? Okay, because... I'm exactly matching the minimum energy required to allow an electron to escape. However, if I increase the frequency of my light, therefore increasing the energy of my light, let's make this 20 joules, let's say 25 joules. Now I only need 10 joules to overcome the forces holding the electrons inside the metal. So what about that extra joules, 25 minus 10? What about that extra 15 joules? Well, that can now be given to kinetic energy of the electron. And that allows the electrons to move faster, higher velocity, higher kinetic energy. So this is the photoelectric equation. This is given on your formula sheet. And in fact, your formula sheet takes it a step further for you. And it says the following. So let's break it down. So this is given, but let's take that away and break it down ourselves. As you know, this side of the equation has to do with the light. This has to do with the metal and this has to do with the electrons and the speed that they move off at. Just remember that E has to do with the light. It allows us to calculate the energy of the photons found in the light. And we can do that by saying E is equal to H times F. Remember, E is energy measured in joule. H is Planck's constant. And in the CAPS curriculum, it's 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34. F is frequency. And in particular, frequency of light measured in hertz, HZ. Very important that they will refer to this as the energy of the light. They'll also refer to it as the energy of the incident photon. If you see the word incident, it just means the light shining on the surface. Then we've got WO, which is your work function, which we calculate multiplying Planck's constant by threshold frequency. So this is work function. And as we said, work function is belonging to the metal. It's the work function of a particular metal and it's measured in joules. 
FO is threshold frequency. And again, that is all going to depend on the metal that we're speaking about. Different metals have different threshold frequencies and it's measured in hertz. And the H is again Planck's constant. And then EK max, maximum kinetic energy. Yes, you do have to say max when you write out your formula or we'll mark you incorrectly. So EK max is equal to half M V max squared. So maximum velocity. So mass, because we are dealing with how the kinetic energy works for the photoelectrons or the electrons, sometimes they call it electrons, sometimes they call it photoelectrons. The mass is the mass of an electron. This is given to you on your formula sheets and it is the mass of an electron, 9,11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms and then v max squared maximum speed maximum velocity that's measured in meters per second so here's a list of all the constants that you will get in your physical sciences paper and the ones that i'm highlighting are the ones relevant to this particular section you've got speed of light in a vacuum planck's constant you've got the electron mass over here in the next lesson, we'll be going over a past paper question and I'll show you how to use the photoelectric effects equation. I'll see you there. Bye, everybody.